This is the secret missing episode of Maple Town, known originally in Japan as Maple Town Monogatari, translated as Maple Town Stories. It was never aired, not even in Japan, because the Canadian Board of Standards and Practices actually threatened to file a class action lawsuit on both Toei Animation and Sabin Entertainment if they dared to air it, as the show setting and time period were inaccurate enough, as it is, without all the flashy and fetish elements, as yes, this series takes place in Canada during the 1920s. You must be 8,250 years old and have an unhealthy craving for bestiality to view. Tissues, dildos and a full-body human suit to give to your anthropomorphic animal love partner, while having your swell way with it is advised. Hello, my name is Patty Rabbit and I live in Maple Town. Now what makes Maple Town so unique and sexy from all the other locations in Canada, is that it is populated entirely by anthropomorphic talking animals. But of course, all of you are most likely scratching your various private areas wondering what my main sexual orientation is. Well YouTubers, I am a flashy. Yes, I really 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 love sexy, furless humans and their ripening smooth hairless bodies, and I get an extra wet blanket just thinking about the sweet embrace of human flesh nestled in the palms of my hands. It's just as swell as it sounds. And since we are on that topic, it just so happens that everyone in Maple Town is a flashy. In fact, you might say that Maple Town is the official flashy capital of Canada. Ha ha ha. But it's true, the entire citizenship of Maple Town spends every waking moment masturbating to various pornos and hentai featuring naked humans to the point where our combined love juices would flood Maple Town, keeping our fields and meadows green and lush throughout the warm seasons. And when we weren't masturbating to naked pictures off the internet or reading shonen slash shoujo i mangas, we would head down to the local flashy brothel, and pay our good friend Wild Wolf for one of his genuine human prostitutes. And since we are on the topic, Wild Wolf was not a homeless criminal and bad guy like our series led you to believe, but rather he was one of Maple Town's most respected citizens, as he had some of the best quality of human hose Canada had to offer. But if you were paying attention to all those past tenses, Wild Wolf has sadly not been seen in Maple Town lately, not ever, since some strange clown in a pirate's outfit and his unusual circus came to Maple Town. At first we thought they were just some of Wild Wolf's customers, but he hasn't been seen much after those events. Er, too bad, I really miss his human nose. Now I'm sure you'd think that being a town full of anthropomorphic animal flashies that now lacks a human brothel would mean that we get very little action here in Maple Town. Well we have actually worked around that little problem, as when we want to have our swell way with each other, all we have to do is slip on these synthetic human flesh suits that give anyone who wears them the authentic look of a naked human. These special flesh suits are courtesy of the Canadian branch of Medical Mechanica. But it's true, me and my entire family like to put on our human suits almost every night and have some super swell flashy incest with one another. But by far my favorite person in Maple Town is my badass BFF Bobby Bear, who is the toughest kid in Maple Town. He may act tough, but I know he's a softy at heart, and he goes completely mental when he sees me in a human suit and he pounces on me like, well, like a wild animal. Link. Those sweet naked bodies just talking about Bobby makes me want to see him. I think I'll go do that right now. Oh wait, there is someone headed this way, and, oh wow, it looks like a sexy human. Why hello there my sexy little rabbit. My name is Akane Tender Toast Tendo, member of the Japanese branch of the Gummy Bunch, and leader of the group Spy Sexual Division Akane Alpha. Yes! <laughs> Hey, my name is Jazz Mitchell from Wackaville, representing the Australian branch of the Betty Bunch. Get up, get up. And hello, my name is Whimsy, from the Canadian kids show Whimsy's House, representing the recently established Canadian branch of the Betty Bunch. Moreover, Paddleponer69 was originally going to make a secret missing episode on my aforementioned series before moving on to this one. Well, hopefully he'll get back to my swell story soon. Ha-ha-ha. All the kids horses and all the kids men couldn't put the fourth wall back together again. Ha, huh, just what the hell was that that just happened? Oh never mind. Anyways, what are you fine forms of flesh doing here in Maple Town? Well it should be flying foot slit on this, even to the most stock out dudes. Then aside from being a rigid footster, I am also a rigid zoo file. And when I heard that a certain small town in Canada consisted entirely of anthropomorphic fleshies, I figured this would be the perfect stop to make my next slow rig journey. Ahaha! 
to write, and the reason I'm here in this aforementioned town is, because it was the perfect chance to get to know Akadme a little better, as we both share something in common, that being our love for sexy, smooth-looking bare feet. Besides, I've been hearing a lot of swell things about Akadme's podophilic martial arts skills and I was really hoping she could use said skills on me sometime after these events. Yes. And the reason I'm here is because Pedalponer69 wanted to properly introduce me as a member of the Betty Bunch, since he never got around to making a secret missing episode about my aforementioned series. All the kids listen to all the kids men, couldn't put the fourth wall back together again. Oh sweet double dild as the fourth wall is becoming a very popular target today, Kahaya. <laughs> well I must say that's very swell to hear. You lovely ladies are actually the first set of humans we've seen in Maple Town in a while to come have here to come, and might I say I consider it an honor to be the first one to be in your drop dead sexy presence, ha <laughs> ha Oh, go ladies, looks like we got ourselves a little gentleman in, maybe now is no presence. I really appreciate how drop dead sexy you find me in my two quick comrades. Wink. By the way, I noticed that you and your Aussie friend mentioned a few times that you were podophiliacs. Well it just so happens that I find a human's bare feet to be very, as you so put it, sexy and smooth looking. F yes, I often fantasize about a human trampling all over me and smothering my small bunny body with those glistening flash pads. In fact it was my classmate Fanny Fox who introduced me to podophilia to begin with, as she had a huge collection of foot Pappers magazine filling up most of her room whenever I went over to her house. Last I heard about Fanny is that she was visited by some French talking valley girl and I haven't seen or heard from her since then. Hmm, I'm assuming she took off with her after that. What's that, French talking valley girl? Yeah, that sounds like no other than my pedal pal Sissy Delmas, leader of the podophiliac group La Belle Dunn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, why don't I introduce you to my good friend Bobby Bear? Why I'm sure he'll be thrilled to know that we have humans in Maple Town again. Yes. Hold on, is this Bobby Bear and Earth Man? Um, look we appreciate the offer but two out of three of us happen to be- Wahaha, <laughs> why that sounds very slow this rabbit, lead the way. Kahaha, <laughs> come on ladies, let's see where this takes us. I was really hoping that we could find us some more females, but now we have to go look for some herb, boy there. Sigh, come back if you come on Lindsay, let's just get this over with. Who knows, maybe this bobby bear will have a sister or two, or maybe even a drop dead sexy mama bear. Link. Well, alright, off to it then. Meanwhile, elsewhere in Maple Town. Hello, my name is Bobby Bear, and I am a badass. I am such a badass that it happens to run in my entire family. Yes, in fact it was my mother, Mrs. Bear, who taught me all the ropes in how to be a rocket fighter, and surprisingly I was even able to surpass her and become ha 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 on the biggest bruiser in the family. Speaking of which, my family happens to run a local general store in Maple Town, which also doubles as the Maple Town Service Canada, which so happens to be the town's truest source of income ha 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 cum. In fact, my dad Mr. Bear, aside from being a somewhat lazy badass, happens to be the biggest welfare case in all of Maple Town. Come on, huh? But don't let our cute and cuddly images fool you. Me and my family pride ourselves in our rough and ready bruiser status. And if you ever underestimate our swellness, those sweet humans, it's gonna get ugly. Anyways, I've got to get back home and help mom guard the store from cheap skates. Off to it then, oh wait, is, is that who I think it is coming and I'm coming this way? Ah yes, it's good to be back here in Maple Town after so long a ah, long. Too bad I can't stick around for much longer a ah, ah, longer, as I still have an important assignment to take care of. Ha, I knew it, Wild Wolf, you've come ha 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 come back to Maple Town. Hey, this is so swell. Oh, is that you, Poppy Bear? Well, if it isn't one of my best customers, back when I was running the House of Flesh. So tell me, Poppy, do you and your folks still run the General Store Slash Service Canada? Well, yes we do, but that's not important. What brings you back to Maple Town after being away for so- Yeah, you're right, it's really not that important. But it's actually swell that I ran into you, Bobby. I could really use your help with something. Yeah, what's that? You see you need my- There you are, Bobby. I was looking all over for you all out the fuck. Wild Wolf, is that you? Oh, sweet Jill is not another herb, man. Oh, wow, are those actual humans over there, Patty? Yeah, Patty Rabbit, just who are these strange people on their odd-looking pet? Pet? Er, something tells me I should have set this one out. Oh, I'm just, who's this lovely wolf stuck here? Hey there, Mr. Big and Dad, how would you like me to be your little red riding hood? Wink. Yeah. Hello? Oh boy, looks like Akadme's birth roots are starting to kick in. 
Look, I've already wasted enough time here. Bobby, I need you to come with me to the Windmill Tower in the center of Maple Town. I need you to help me look for something. What, what do you mean, Wild Wolf? What's at the Windmill Tower? Yes, yes Mr. Wolf. Great tell just what is in that windmill that is so important. Well, what the fuck? Who, who said that? Here, why don't I show you? Well, well, Mr. White Wolf, we meet at last. Ha <laughs> ha By the way, just what is the shoe size of you and all your friends? Hey, just who is that wild wolf? Yeah, and just why does she want to know our shoe size? Each and mm and well, I don't know who she is, but I can tell you what she is. A hunt and bounty hunter. Er, she must have followed me back from Photophobia. Ha 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 ha, you were correct in assuming I am a Punyan Bounty Hunter, but no other than Nagi, the Punyan Bounty Hunter from Tenshi Miryo Series 1, known outside Japan as Tenshi Universe. Yes. But of course, only a Punyan Bounty Hunter would ask for someone's shoe size. F yes, I've heard all about the Bunyan Bounty Hunters. Rumor has it that there are dozens of them scattered all across Photophobia. It's a bit of now that you mention it, Jan Chan. I myself have heard a few things about these old robots. I always overhear conversations about them from my fellow healers at the Tendo Brothel, none of them being very pleasant. Alright, Miss Bounty Hunter, just why are you here? Well, Mr. Wolf, normally I'd be hunting for my mortal enemy, the Series 1 version of Ryoko Hakuki, but recently I was hired to hunt you down, as rumor has it that you have something very valuable in your possession. A certain book that certain people are after. The book? And just what is this lady talking about? So, you know about the Tome of Forbidden Slowness, do you? Well then, Miss Nagi, the rumors you heard are in fact true. Here's the Tome of Forbidden Slowness right here! But if you want it, you'll have to pry it from my old dead human father, Exile! What the fuck? The Tome of Forbidden Slowness? Em, I'm confused. What's this all about? Yeah, someone clue me in here. Well, Mr. Wolf, I would as you so put it, pry it from your cold dead hands. That is, if it were the actual Tome of Forbidden Slowness. Ha <laughs> ha that's what I thought, you cowardly piece of shit! What? You, you know this is a fake? Oh, come ha ha ha. Come now, Mr. Wolf. I think it's pretty fucking obvious why you left the Tathophia so suddenly to get back to your hometown in such a hurry. The tome is hidden somewhere here in Maple Town, isn't it? What the wild wolf? You've been in Photophobia this whole time. I'm still confused. Just what is this tome of forbidden swellness? Okay, wild wolf. You owe me and Bobby an explanation. Yes, you're right, Patty. It's a good time I let you and Bobby know that I am a freedom fighter in the resistance movement in Photophobia, as well as a member of the East Blue Equinox. Led by that paddle pirate pimp buddy, the Toe Jam Clown. The Jam Clown? Wait, you mean that oddly dressed pirate clown that came after who came to Maple Town several months ago? You're working for him? Why, yes, he is a young lady, and that makes him the perfect target for my heel hunting quota. Why, just the fact that he's part of the rebellion makes him worth a lot of cold hard cash in Photophobia. But that, that is just the tip of the iceberg. Okay, we get why this swag bitch would be after this herb, man wolf, but why are you also after the Tome of Forbidden Swellness? That's a good question. What would someone who hunts pot affiliates for money be interested in such a powerful artifact? Well, to be perfectly honest, Mr. Wolf, the only thing I'm interested in is your bounty. The one who's interested in the Tome of Forbidden Swellness is the person who hired me to track you down. And speak of the devil, here she is coming this way now. Well then come on, Afghane, Whimsy, let's take on this swag bitch and show her a lot for- What, what the, the fuck? fuck? What, what the, the fuck? fuck? What, what the, the fuck? fuck? Like my two shit she said. What the fuck? Well, Nagi, have you got the Tome of Forbidden Swellness yet? Our glorious intro leader is getting restless, hold on. It's that. Oh, sweet dude, as it is. It's you. What? Just what the flying sweet toad chat is going on here? No, no, no. Looks like today is my lucky day. <laughs> the seeker of the Tome of Forbidden Swellness has revealed herself. As a result, both the Swell and Unswell versions of Avcat may tend to meet face to face. Will the half-assed version of Avcat may get her hands on the Tome of Forbidden Swellness? Will not be playing the bounty on Wild Wolf, and will Maple Town survive in the process? All these and more in the conclusion to the secret missing episode of Maple Town. M. Earth Club, that was your cue to advertise the foot service. What's the deal?
Oh, sorry, Justin Cher, but I was just giving some of the aforementioned foot service to Miss Dear the Maple Town School teacher. You know, four trotter her hooves are tree sexy and smooth. We. Oui. And thanks for sharing on. Berg. Hmm, I wonder if there are any poopy faggots in Maple Town. The moral of the story is that it's getting more difficult to come back and to come up with clever ways to tell you to wait for part two for the moral. Also, if you think this is real, you truly are a sick fuck. Ha 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 ha. Later all you swell foot peppers. Bye bye. Get